Hey, this is Todd. I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about a little supplement that I ran across on Reddit the other day called Dead Memories and Other Mysteries. It seemed really cool, so I thought I would point it out, spotlight it a little bit, talk about it a little bit. I will pass along a link to it in the show notes. I believe you can get it at itch.io. I think it is free or pay what you want, so it's pretty much a no-brainer to at least download it and check it out. It is it was, uh, I saw it posted to the OSR Reddit. Having read through it, it's pretty much system uh, neutral. It doesn't, uh, doesn't, it has very simple mechanics. It doesn't really feature anything that applies to one system or the other. So you can pretty much drop this into your game of choice. I just read over, I thought it was really neat. It's laid out beautifully. Uh, thanks to the author, who's, I will get to momentarily when I get to that part of the book, because it's not on the front page. And I apologize, I can't remember his name for creating a print-friendly format. The original layout is very nicely done, and it uh, if you print it out, it would be like a pamphlet, which you could you know have a sort of accordion-type read to it, and you could fold it and then read it through in that pamphlet form. The only problem with that is, is that when I was looking at it, you know, I'm looking at it as a PDF on my iPad, and it becomes a little bit confusing to follow. It was sort of funny because when I first reached out to him about it, he said, as sort of half-joking, that it kind of fits in with a theme of being mysterious. And I said it does, but usability-wise, it would be great to have one that's just a vertically laid out screen-friendly one. So he was really fast and put together a screen-friendly version, which looks beautiful, too. So if you do download on it, on Itch, you will have the option of doing the vertical one, which is what I'm showing on my screen, or the original pamphlet style, which is great if you're printing it out. In any case, let's dig in there and see what we've got. So the uh, subtitle is called Methods and Advice Concerning Exploration of Memory Worlds and the Things Beyond Them. The idea here, and which I really like a lot, is basically he's given a, a little ecological method of delving into the memories of corpses. This is something I think is really cool. It sort of expands upon the stuff you might be able to accomplish with a spell like Speak with the Dead. But he gives you a little bit more... Gives you a little bit more uh, meat, so to speak, to go on that bone, as well as giving other options for really expanding it, not just looking at what you can do with a corpse, say, looking at its last moments, but even some ways you can delve beyond that and some of the things that live there. So in this case, in the case of this one, there uh, he introduces a type of fungus, and this fungus, which he calls umerlac, also known as morning cap, which I like, it's a mushroom that, I'm just going to read directly from it. It's a mushroom growing exclusively on bodies of the recently deceased. It bears a pale purple cap that sits on a long, narrow, milky stalk. When dried and burned, it produces sweet purple smoke. Inhale enough of it and you will go into a deep and uneasy trance, sweating, drooling, and unable to respond to any stimuli, even harmful ones. All inhaling the same smoke will find themselves transported together into a memory world, playing out the last living hours of the host on which the burned umerlac sprouted from. So there, basically, in that paragraph, is the rub of what this is about. You find a corpse, if it's fresh, it doesn't say how long this stuff might grow before it dies, or how, however that works, but we can just come up with it on our own. I could even see it being a sort of a permanent thing. I, I thought of the... Uh, not Return of the King, T uh, the Two Towers, when uh, Rohan, they were talking about the flowers that grow on the, uh, on the graves, on the grave, grave mounds of the, uh, of the rulers, or maybe all the Rohan people in those mounds, something that just grows on the dead. One, I like it because it has a, I, I like that he gave it a physical description, which is, it, it speaks to my imagination anyway. I like that it has a benefit if you, inhale it and smoke it you get to go into this this memory world as he calls it it also talks about a drawback being that if you're in that kind of trance however long you're in there you were subject you know you were basically uh you know vulnerable it, it, I, I suppose it'd be if you were asleep or if you were knocked out right even harmful stimuli won't necessarily wake you up so there's a price to be paid it's not something you want to do carelessly in a dangerous place because something stumbles on you and you were in this umerlac trance you're in trouble. So what is the memory world? So he goes on to explain, it's a dreamlike place. It's a recreation of the past, but in a way the host experienced it. So in other words, you're seeing everything that the host sees, not necessarily stuff that they don't see. 
And I take that to mean something that, let's say, you the host was killed by a an arrow from a sniper. They're not necessarily going to see the sniper because they weren't aware of it. They will probably feel the impact of the arrow, and maybe their mind will create at least some trajectory back of that arrow into perhaps nothingness or whatever their memories of having what that area was, but not necessarily... It's not magic in the sense that you're not getting a non-opinionated, you know, true view of the past. You're getting it from what that host person saw, knew, what they experienced. So it gives you an interesting twist, which you could obviously play a lot, play around with a lot, particularly if you decide to bring this into your campaign. You want to think about, well, in a world where this stuff exists, how would that affect people who are trying to do dirty work? You know, if you're a, if you're if you're a merc or you're a, an assassin who does wet work in a fantasy realm, and people can burn Umarlak and try to sniff out what you've done, how does that affect you? Because you know that it's going to give you this view, but it's going to give you this view from this very specific angle. Maybe you can cheat that angle. Maybe you can use disguising to set somebody else up because that's the last thing they see. So there are options if you are doing dirt or if you're trying to get away with something or you're trying to pin a crime on somebody else. You have stuff. So it's not a you know, win button on now we'll know how everybody died. If we inhale this stuff, you could play around with the trickery and all the stuff that goes into it. Now it gives you a little more detail about what happens when you're entering a memory world. So you're gonna roll a D6, and that sum becomes what they call he calls a bond value. Now you can do things while you're in the memory world, and those will affect your bond. And he, he, I'm not going to go through the exact mechanics specifically, but basically the more you do stuff, the more your bond will drop down. And if it drops to zero, you come out of the, come out of the trance and you basically throw up. So you have these chances to interact with this scene, this memory scene. But the more you do, the more you kind of change things around. Because remember, you're sort of, you're living through this moment. So if you think about it, like you've, in a sense, pulled it up on a holodeck type thing and you start moving things around to see what happens your bond will drop and eventually that will go to zero. So that's sort of, you're on a clock, right? So you may want to do things in there, but the more you do, the, the faster you run out of time. One of the cool things about it is that in itself would have been neat, but then he goes and gives you this idea of the beyond. So you, what you can try to do is you're in someone's memory world and you're in this moment. The yeah, There's a question that's sort of, well, what if you run away from the moment? What if you're like, okay, here's this guy and he's going to about to choke on a piece of broccoli and die, but I'm not really interested in that. I, I want to see some other stuff or whatever. I go off. So he gives what he this called the space to beyond, which gives you some idea of all these things that are out there if you try to essentially use the use this mind memory world and, and, and try to pull away from that moment of death kind of stuff that happens. So that's a neat thing because it's, I guess what I like about it is it, 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 it would have been a missing part of the system or would have been a question that a player might ask about it if you were sitting there saying, okay, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm inside this memory of this guy's last moments and he's in a restaurant and he's in the downtown. What if I walk outside? What if I just keep walking? What do I see? Now, he could have just said, well, it's just you're trapped in this area. You know, he could have said you're in a 30, 30 by 30 foot. Just put it at that. And there's fog or you just you pop out or you don't or something else happens. But it gives that extra depth by thinking that there are things out there. And he goes into a little bit of what those could be, certain things that might be out there and what those mean, which I thought was really cool. And you could even then take this and, and build on it if you want to use this for a whole other thing. Maybe there are ways in sort of in, inception-like senses where you can keep going out layers and then ending up in some, you know, other consciousness or in some kind of in a sense, like maybe even a type of plane or space that's out there that connects all our consciousnesses together. And of course, you can use the kind of stuff that he here, he describes here in the beyond, but it's all very cool. Then he gives you some advice if you end up in the beyond. And then he talks about uh, cultivating Umarlax. And, it, you know, you're looking at it. And it's only what, I guess, let me see from the beginning. One, two, three, four pages. And but it's all very useful stuff. It's it's great. And I, I, I you know, I found it on Reddit. I, I, I sent him a couple of bucks and downloaded it. I thought it was just laid out beautifully. I thought it was a really cool idea. The concept is great. You can fit this in anything, whether you're running fifth edition, whether you're running an OSR game, whether you're running a totally different engine altogether. It's something you can drop in your game. It has a lot of I feel like it has a lot of interesting applications. Not only could it be something that you burned for this effect, maybe that can become uh, ingredients that you would use for other rituals or effects or all kinds of ways you could you could take this and use it. You know, what 
what kind of necromantic rituals might involve some kind of usage of Omerlax or maybe hags or people out in the wilderness will harvest these from dead bodies and keep them and do things with them and maybe parcel them out you know maybe you could go to somebody maybe there's a bank in certain places in a sense that has all these different deceased people and dried umarlax that you could then access stuff that really opens up some great stuff and it's very uh it's not super gonzo you know but it's interesting and it, it definitely opens up possibilities without i think without really adding any complexity at all it's just a thing it's either there or it's not there you can figure out what to do with it and there it is on the last page made with public domain artwork, which he'd used it to great effect. And I, I meant to ask him, but I forgot whether he added the mushrooms on there or if the Omar Lax were, he just found artwork that had that sort of stuff on it. Fred Bednarski, so great work. I will add a link, or I will, there will be a link to the itch.io product page for this. Like I said, as of this, as of me recording this, it is free, so grab it. But I, I, I really, you know, I, I think you should, if it sounds interesting from watching this, then, you know, drop a couple of bucks, you know, that will take, take some of your coffee, take your afternoon coffee money, drop it on this. It's got a lot, I think, packed into three or four pages. I thought it was, it was very inspirational, very uh, imaginative. I guess it was done, it says here on the first page, part of a, a, a dream jam. I, I'm assuming that's some kind of jam where they do uh, create some products that have to do with um, some materials, some content that has to do with dreams. But I don't know how it, you know, if it won that or just he just submitted it or how that works, but super well done. Give it a look out. And other than that, I will talk to you later. Oh, and uh, before I forget, if you like this content, please give me the thumbs up on YouTube. Think about subscribing. I also have set up a coffee page if you'd like to contribute to the channel in that way. But anything you can do helps me out. Doesn't really hurt you much. Well, if you drop me a couple of dollars, that might hurt you out a little bit but other than that you know you can you can help me out with really without costing you anything but an extra click of the mouse so if you're feeling in a good mood please go ahead it really does help but again thanks for watching and i will talk to you later